Equine Halls, Woodlot Meadow, Morris County Historical Society's Tree Cavity Nesting Bird Boxes Monitoring Route. Morris County Historical Society's headquarters, Acorn Hall, is located on six and a half acres in Morristown, New Jersey. The property includes landscape grounds as well as a historic cultural woodlot area. More recently, the woodlot includes a small meadow after losing many native trees due to Superstorm Sandy. While the area slowly recovers as a second growth mixed native hardwood forest, the new meadow offers MCHS an opportunity to encourage the return of native New Jersey plants and insects. And where there's cover and food sources available, seasonal native tree cavity nesting birds aren't far behind. About half of all birds worldwide nest in tree cavities, which are naturally hollowed out spaces in older trees carved out by large birds like woodpeckers. Seasonal tree cavity nesters that arrived to breed in New Jersey in the summer months include eastern bluebirds, tree swallows, and house wrens. The house wrens, a migratory bird from northern Mexico, have taken a particular liking to Acorn Hall's disturbed woodland area and urban neighborhood setting. The diminutive brown bird's melodic song is often heard before the bird is seen. By mid-June, the woodlot meadow has many native plants coming up, such as common milkweed, spiderwort, and a carpet of jewelweed between them. As the summer season progresses, many more native plants, such as bergamot, boneset, and goldenrod, and more ground-dwelling and flying insects appear. The house wren adults' diet consists of crawling insects which find a lot of plant cover in the meadow. Last year, MCHS set up four bluebird nesting boxes in the meadow to add to available breeding sites in the area that now has fewer old trees. MCHS volunteers built and modified the nesting boxes. Specific dimensions are required. The entrance hole is two and one quarter inches times one and three eighths inches so larger birds can't enter and use the box. The depth of the box is nine inches and the width and length of the box is five and a half inches by five and a half inches. Air holes were added to the top of the box. Front and or side access doors make for easier cleaning by the nest monitor between fledges and new nests being built. This is Acorn Hall's box one in early spring. Away from trees and fences, the box faces east, and the nest height is four to six feet. Minimum spacing for tree cavity nesting boxes is 300 feet, or 125 to 150 yards apart, a very minimum of 100 yards. This spacing is to avoid competition between tree cavity nesters. The tube baffle is added to discourage predators from climbing up the post. House wrens retreat to nearby shrubs to hide from predators, which add the woodlot meadow. This is the opposite situation for eastern bluebirds and tree swallows, as they like to survey open spaces like fields to see predators. The nesting boxes route is checked at least every two weeks from early April through August when the birds migrate back to their winter habitat. The nesting period, however, does not go without challenges. There may be unfriendly neighbors sharing the natural area. Early this season, box one showed no marks, perhaps an attempt by a squirrel wanting to nest in the box or a predator such as a raccoon trying to raid the nest box. Box three shows scratch marks on its side, indicating a persistent predatory attempt. Notice the spider webs in the air holes that the house wrens use in building their nests. So which egg looks different? Occasionally, an unwanted avian visitor gets inside the tree cavity nester's box, as in box one this spring. A native brown-headed cowbird laid an egg in the nest for the unsuspecting house wren female to incubate and raise. This is a form of brood parasitism, and the native bird egg cannot be removed. The next monitoring nesting box check found that the house wrens had apparently solved their own problem. The large egg was gone. But if everything proceeds as it should, the nest building commences. Sometimes a house wren male builds a dummy nest or two 
to impress the female with his nest building skills. Then she chooses one to use. Sometimes the small but mighty house wrens can be aggressive toward other birds in the vicinity of their nesting box. House wrens make their nests primarily out of evergreen sticks, although they may add grass and feathers. They will hollow out of space in the materials for the eggs. It takes about five to six weeks overall for a house wren to build a nest, lay eggs, incubate the eggs, have the nestlings hatch, and then feed them as they grow until they fledge. Look closely. A brand new house wren nestling has just hatched from a clutch of eggs. Both parents raise the young and seek food for the nestlings. Both parents are thought to feed their older nestlings between 25 and 30 times in one hour. Their wide mouths stand out as a big target for their parents when they feed them mostly grasshoppers, crickets, and caterpillars. These house wren siblings have developed their feathers and are ready to leave the nest, most likely in a matter of days. Their parents will still support them for two to two and a half weeks by bringing them food until the fledglings are self-sufficient. House wren adults typically have two broods per breeding season. Acorn Hall's tree cavity nesting boxes produced 23 house wren fledglings in 2020 and in 2021, 22 have fledged. At the end of the season, all the boxes are cleaned out so they're ready for next year. The data collected about the house wrens is sent to nestwatch.org, which is a nationwide native bird nest monitoring program of the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. The information is submitted to a database used by researchers that tracks the status of and trends in the reproductive biology of birds. The organization's website indicates that the house wren's population is declining in the Northeast. MCHS is happy to support this conservation effort in Acorn Hall's Woodlot Meadow, which seems to be a good source of native plants and insects for the house wrens continuing success. And that's something to celebrate.